name is Fernando Picasso. I'm a second year PhD student in operations management at Fundação Getúlio Vargas here in Brazil. This video is to tell you a little bit about my participation in the one day publishing workshop event sponsored by the Journal of Supply Chain Management that I could help organizing and giving a presentation. Professor Barbara Flynn, co-editor-in-chief of the Journal of Supply Chain Management, who also is my PhD advisor, reached out to me to help her organizing this event. Since the event took place in Brazil and I speak Portuguese, it would be easier for me to solve many issues with different areas at the university. Using the faculty's network, we could communicate the workshop to potential participants from all around the country. In total, we had applicants from 18 different universities from all the different parts of Brazil, from the south to the north regions. And although the main presentations were given by editors in operations and supply chain management journals, we had some attendees from other research areas, such as marketing strategy and competitiveness. I really enjoyed participating in this event, not only as a presenter, but also as the organizing committee member. This was the first time I helped organize an international event. My involvement in this workshop gave me some idea of all the nuts and bolts necessary to organize similar events. In this workshop, I had the opportunity to come up with a presentation about critical thinking, which is a theme that I've studied for quite a while and which I think very important for fresh students. Critical thinking relates mostly to know how to write good arguments. And just to make things clear here, an argument is something very different from a quarrel. Basically, an argument is a reason given to convince something, and it is composed by a conclusion and what supports it, which can be a premise and an assumption. Now, entering into each argument's component, a conclusion is the main point of the argument, and it can denote an opinion, an inference, or a recommendation. On the other hand, a premise is any support given for a conclusion that should be included only if it makes a difference in supporting the conclusion of the argument. An assumption is something that goes unstated and takes into account the context and the audience. Assumptions are taken for granted and necessary to develop an understanding of the argument. Every information that is left out of the argument is an assumption. So to better identify the elements of an argument, you can look at some triggering words. For example, if I say that the GDP has steadily declined because of the financial crisis, the word because here is showing me that what comes after it is a premise supporting the main conclusion of the argument, that is the declining GDP. Now, arguments are crucial for academic writers because to set up your own argument, for instance, it is necessary first to summarize correctly what others have said before. To this end, critical thinking gives you tools to find someone's conclusions, premises, and assumptions. And also, critical thinking helps you identify the conversation other authors are inserted in. By using critical thinking to enter into a conversation, writers are more likely to recognize and identify the moves that really matter in academic writing. Another feature in my presentation was the section about tips for native Portuguese speakers to write in English. This part was based on the paper by Marlow, who analyzed the most common mistakes Brazilian academics were making when writing English. Basically, the, authors, the author provides 10 tips that can enormously help Brazilian schoolers. The ones that called more my attention related to the use of the pronoun that and the use of the passive voice versus the active voice. 
at the presentation, the use of the passive and active voices raised a variety of opinions. This divergence showed me that there is no right or wrong, but instead, whether to use the passive or active voice in some instances is more a matter of style, depending on the journal the researcher is aiming at publishing. I strongly suggest you to take a look at this paper. Its title is Writing Scientific Articles Like a Native English Speaker, Top 10 Tips for Portuguese Speakers written by Marlow and published in 2014 in a journal called Clinix. For us, Brazilian writers, this can be a great aid to advance our English writing skills.